Hello everyone, Gary Laubach, Mike Joseph. We are behind the mic and much like many of you, we're a little bit depressed ourselves coming off uh, the loss on Saturday as Lafayette really struggled to run any kind of offense against Georgetown. They now are 0-1 in the Patriot League. So there is no hope now unless we win out. I don't think any Patriot League team is going to go undefeated, Mike. No, I don't think so either. And uh, if you have two losses, obviously you're probably out of it. But I, I think you know this team's gonna; these teams are gonna beat each other up a little bit. I don't think Lehigh's gonna end up; they're two on on now. I don't think they're gonna end up undefeated. So it's gonna be a matter, maybe a matter of co-champions this year. Mm -hmm. But Lafayette, again, it's still out in front of them. You try to find some sort of silver lining, but Saturday w was a struggle. You can't score a point in the second half to win that ball game, and then you have the ball in deep, and you know, obviously struggle on special teams as well. So it was very disappointing. Yeah, it certainly was that I thought the defense played uh, quite well actually didn't give up any second half points but we didn't get any either and that was part of the problem we didn't run the ball very well we certainly uh, didn't protect the quarterback real well that has been problematic throughout the year and I think Keegan maybe has regressed a little bit in terms of maybe hanging on to the ball a little bit longer than he should have and and maybe just not as comfortable as he was a couple of weeks ago and there probably are a lot of reasons for that. Yeah, um, you, I don't think he's hit a wall or anything physically. I think, uh, you know, this is where the high school season is probably coming to an end for him. Um, but it just looks like he's struggling with his reads a little bit, and they're putting him in, in situations, again, the third and long situations are, are hard for any quarterback. So uh, Lafayette's offense is going to move the football when they're good on first down. It's really that. If they're good on first down, whether they run the ball or throw the ball for five, six-yard gain, they stay on schedule. When they get behind the sticks, they're, they're not a good football team, and they have shown that drop back pass is not going to be good for them. He's better when he knows where he's going to throw the football, mm -hmm. and if he doesn't, he can use his legs. And, and recently, he has not even used his legs. So, again, Lafayette's going to have to run the football. This is the way they beat Bucknell last year, the way they beat Fordham last year. They ran the football strong. They mixed in a couple passes here or there. That's going to be the formula. And I'm glad you mentioned that. The last two Lafayette victories were just a year ago when Lafayette knocked off Bucknell and then went on a two-game winning streak as they turned right around and beat Fordham. And certainly looking for that to happen again, as those were, as we mentioned, the last wins by Lafayette. They've lost 10 in a row. All right, they're going up against the Bucknell Bison. Even though they're 1-6, and six, they're 1-1. One one in the Patriot League. Dave Cicchini certainly from his days at Lehigh knows the Patriot League. He knows Lafayette. So uh, he is a formidable force himself. Oh, he absolutely is. And if I was studying him, I would go back even years, go back to the, the Valpo uh, job mm -hmm, he had. Mm -hmm. I'd even go back to the old Lehigh games because he is going to be able to run that offense that Lehigh runs. He's going to spread you out. He's going to mix in the run. Fresh Knock is a very strong runner inside, so you need to stop the run. And they have the best receiver, I feel, in the league, along with Nick Pearson and Brandon Sanders. Mm -hmm. You and I saw him in high school when he played for St. Joe's. I mean, just a great great player. He's going to be able to advance the ball down the field. He's got 44 catches this year. You have to find a way to take away the things they do well. Number one, stop the run. Number two, you got to take away Brandon Sanders. If he has eight or nine catches for 150 yards, you're going to lose this football game. Well, he had 14 catches against Holy Cross, so he is capable of really lighting it up. Uh, he has 44 catches on the year for well over 400 yards. Their quarterback is Loden Bitkoffer. He's a junior. Uh, he completes 60% of his passes. Uh, they're a very young football team. On the defensive side of the football, they only have one senior over on that side. They don't have very many seniors even on the offensive side of the football. So there are, is certainly light at the end of the Bucknell Tunnel, too. And this is a huge ball game for them. If they go 2-1, and one, it's all out in front of them. I, I don't think you could get any more psyched up for a football game. It's a matter of how depressed are we coming off our last football game. Yeah, it's going to be uh, what is that locker room? How are they going to come out? How are they uh, going to come out in the locker room and, and be good early in the game? I think they were good early in the game last week. This is a defense for Lafayette that's they're getting better. Mm -hmm. It's really not getting – it's getting – this is a defense that put pressure on the quarterback. You get Keith Earl up there. You see Malik Ham coming about, Barnett. You add in, obviously, two two good linebackers. So Lafayette's going to be able to get after them. Remember, this is a game where Logan last year, the quarterback for Bucknell, hurt himself at the end of the game, right. had the knee injury on a sack, and pretty much Lafayette put the game away with their defensive line last year with a couple sacks late. So um, this, is a, this is a Bucknell team. If you let Logan sit in the pocket, he's very good. He's going to be able to find receivers. They hurt us extremely well last year with the tight end. Remember the tight end play action, mm -hmm. little RPO, tight end down the middle of the field. Same guy caught two touchdown passes. We struggled with a single high safety, so I don't think you're going to see that. I think you're going to see probably two safeties maybe up in the box, back, 
Um, but Logan is very, very capable, and obviously a guy like uh, um, Brandon Sanders is terrific. And, of course, on the defensive side for Bucknell, we better know where Simeon Page is. He's been as good as anybody at linebacker in this league, and uh, he is back, and he already has the numbers. He's got 35 tackles, six and a half tackles for a loss, five sacks, fumble recovery, a block kick, and Brandon ben ben Benson in the, uh, at the free safety spot. He has over 150 tackles in his career. Yeah, these guys, uh, you know, Bucknell always stresses turning the ball over taking the ball away they're always good at that you can see it they lead the league in interceptions but they're last in the league in turnover margin the only team that's worse than turnover margin or second last is, is Lafayette so you have a, a battle of two teams that are minus six and minus seven when it comes you don't win a lot of football games when you have that type of turnover margin so Lafayette's going to need to be better whoever here, put it this way whoever doesn't turn the ball over is probably going to win this football game Mike will be inside the huddle again this week he's going to talk a little bit about the passing game and of course we will have the football game for you on the Lafayette Sports Network. Kickoff is scheduled for around 3.37. We'll join you right at 3.30. For now, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week behind the mic.